Hey, I'm Ron Carpenter. I want to welcome you to Ron Carpenter Television and welcome you to the encounter as we're beginning to come down now into the final stages of following the life of Ruth and beginning to create all the different kingdom principles that took place in their life. How does God take someone from the background and move their life to the forefront? How does God take someone out of obscurity and move their life all the way into notoriety? How does God take a beggar and move them to the place where they own the whole field they were once begging in? I wanna welcome you to our telecast and we take the responsibility, not lightly, but we take it as a great privilege to be able to bring the word of God to you in such a special way. I'm excited about all this teaching, all this year's teaching I've been able to bring you because whenever I'm learning, that's when I'm most passionate and God has opened my eyes, my mind, just illuminated me to so many different things that he pours in to any child that he wants to take and do a work of grace in their life. I believe you're gonna be touched as we continue to chronicle this encounter. Get ready because these teachings like I'm doing right now begin to prepare you for the defining moments in your life that can alter outcomes and set your life on the right path. I believe he's gonna do it for you. I'll see you again in just a minute. When people talk about Jesus, they think of that gentle lamb. They think about, for God so loved the world, he sent his only son. That's the way they like to think of Jesus. And I have often said churches are guilty of preaching Jesus, but they don't preach what Jesus preached. Let me say that again. Churches preach Jesus because Jesus is a very likable guy. I mean, how can you not like Jesus? Go around healing sick and all who were afflicted of the enemy. I mean, how can you not be drawn to that? But when you get into what Jesus teaches, his teachings will challenge you to the core of your being. And some people say that the Christian life is for weak people. And I'm like, well, you come try it. You try to live by what you can't see. You try to speak your tomorrow into existence. I mean, you, you try to deny your flesh. Luke chapter 16. There was a certain rich man who had a steward. <clears throat> An accusation was brought to him that this man was wasting his goods. So there was a man that had delegated responsibility of the oversight of his stuff to someone else. <laughs> so he had delegated responsibilities and put someone in charge of managing what he owned, okay? So he called him and said to him, what is this I hear about you? Give an account of your stewardship for you can no longer be steward. Now, this is that same for God so loved the world, Jesus. This is written in red. Now we're talking about accountability and stewardship, and Jesus is teaching it. <laughs> the steward said within himself, what shall I do? For my master's taking my stewardship away, and I cannot dig, and I'm ashamed to beg. You know what he's saying? He says, I don't have another skill set. I don't have another way to make money. If I lose this job right here, I'm not going to have any income, and I'm too proud to go back and ask mama to let me live in the basement. So look what he does. He says, I've resolved to, uh, what to do. That when I'm put out of stewardship, they may receive me into their houses. So he called every one of his master's debtors. So evidently, he must have been put in charge of the debt collection. He called the debtors and he said to the first, how much do you owe my master? He said, a hundred measures of oil. So he said to him, take your bill, sit down and write 50. He said to another, how much do you owe? He said, a hundred measures of wheat. He said, all right, take your bill and write 80. So the master commended the unjust steward because he had dealt shrewdly. Listen to this statement. For the sons of the world are more shrewd in their generation than the sons of light. He said, the world knows what they're doing better than my own folk. It's written in red. Jesus is saying it. I'm sorry preachers don't preach it. But it's been there the whole time. Okay, this is my second time preaching it. So here we go. So the master commended him, and in verse 9 he said, I say to you, make friends for yourselves 
by unrighteous mammon. Mammon meaning wor worldly wealth or worldly gain or worldly riches. He says, instead of complaining about all the folk who got money, he said, make an appointment with them. You're going to have to come on up here with me. Come on up. Come on, come on, come on up here. He said, instead of pointing your finger to everybody and complaining, he said, won't you go talk to them? By the way, written in red, somebody say, Jesus, Jesus said it. Je okay. He said, go make friends with them. Okay? That when you fail, they may receive you into an everlasting home. He said, he, is, he who is faithful in what is least is faithful also in much. He who is unjust in what is least is unjust in much. Therefore, if you have not been faithful in unrighteous mammon or money, who will commit to you true riches? He's calling true riches spiritual things. He says, you want authority? You want power? You want to cast out devils? You want to break curses? You want to lay hands on the sick and they recover? He says, you want all that stuff? He said, and you can't handle money? So before God gives you power, he'll test you with money. I see your mad face, but wipe it off. I didn't write it. I'm repeating it. God said, how can I give you spiritual stuff if you can't handle natural stuff? The test for the spirit is the natural. I love preaching like this. I love it. Okay? If you've not been faithful in what is another man's, who will give you your own? No servant can serve two masters. For either he'll hate one and love the other, or else he'll be loyal to one and despise the other. You can't serve God and mammon. So, Lord, bless the reading of your word. In Jesus' name, and everybody said amen. I want you to tell three people with confidence, say, I, I think this is going to be rough. Yeah, I think it's going to be rough. <laughs> I never wanted to pastor ignorant people. By ignorant, I'm not talking about stupidity or capacity. I'm talking about people with a lack of knowledge. I grew up in shouting churches, but a lot of people didn't even know what they were shouting about. And I never wanted to pastor that kind of church. I wanted to be an empowering preacher. I'm a teacher preacher and I want to give power away. And I want, I, want, I want your life to be better because you came, because you listened. I really do want that. So when somebody tells me I've been listening to your messages and my life has changed, you, you give me my birthday, I'm, I'm, I'm happy. Because that's all I want out of it is to see somebody else's life altered in a positive way by the word of God. Throw um, Matthew 5, 5 on the screen if you would please. Jesus does something right out of the gate in his very first sermon called the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 5, 6, and 7, okay? And he starts off by handing out blessings. And he says this one right here. He's talking about blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. You know, he goes through all the blessings. He said, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Bomb number one, are you ready? While Christians sit in buildings and are desperately trying to inherit heaven. God is desperately trying to find a people who can inherit earth. And he has a hard time finding them in church walls. Because the Bible says clearly that the wealth is held by the wicked. The Bible says that. And the Bible said it's laid up for the righteous. God said, I know where your stuff is. I know who's got it, and I can tell you how to get it. We were never meant to be the tail. We were meant to be the head. We were never meant to be the borrower. We were meant to be the lender. And somebody's got to have the courage to get up and say that, and somebody else has got to have to have courage to amen and agree with that. <laughs> Because God said there is a group of people and I want to give the earth to them. And he said it's the meek. The meek is not wimpy. Okay, you know, nobody really wants to wear a shirt that says I am meek. 
But meek is not wimpy. It is not correlated in any all with weakness. Meek is actually just the, the opposite. It is strength under control. It is strength and it is power, but it is power that has been harnessed. Meek, meekness is when you have taken power and learned to channel it toward an intended end. Anger is not bad if you could harness it and channel it. But when anger makes you reckless and careless and lose your emotions, lose your temper, temper and make crazy decisions, you are not meek. Because meek people know how to take the anger and move something with it. Meek people know how to take a bad experience and look at it as stepping stones. Oh, I'm about to preach here. Meek people are people that take someone hurting you and understanding that it just made you stronger. It didn't really make you weaker. It made you stronger and it developed your strength. Meek people are people who learn something from every experience and take something valuable out of it and leave the pain of it in their past but take what they learn and turn it on their tomorrow. Meekness is controlled strength harnessed toward an intended end to reach a goal that God has. And God says that people who can take every life experience and channel it and move it in a positive direction, God said, I'll give you the whole earth. Do I have any people that want to be meek in the sound of my voice? I'm reading what Jesus said. The meek shall, blessed are the people who can control and discipline themselves, for I will give them the whole earth. That's powerful. you can bless yourself or you can curse yourself. It's your choice. How you gonna respond to a problem? Judas went and committed suicide. Peter repented. What are you gonna do? The Encounter. Eight dynamic messages from Ron Carpenter designed to help you encounter greatness. The anointing of the Holy Ghost breaking curses. Your daddy's words are falling out of your head right now. God has got seeds of greatness in people and I'm ready for him to reign, but you've got to serve God and do what your hands have been given to do with all your might. I'm preaching this with such passion because some of you, this is your ticket to the next level. This eight message series is available for your gift of $40 or more. Call in the next 10 minutes and we'll include free shipping and an MP3 download card. Call now or visit roncarpenter.com or write to the address on your screen. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth and God said, let there be light. So the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. He owns the cattle on a thousand hills, the wealth in every mine. Hosea, he says, the gold is mine, the silver is mine. There is nothing that God doesn't own. The confusion we've had is the difference between ownership and stewardship. Okay? Stewardship is not a word we hear used in current vocabulary. It's certainly not used among millennials. It wasn't even used much amongst my generation. Stewardship is what you do with what this man has delegated to you. <clears throat> See, my, when I go to tithe and offering time, I have no issues. I have no wrestling. I wrote the biggest check this morning I've ever written in my life. In my life. I wrote it this morning. And we didn't fight God none. Do you know why? Because I approach everything as it's not mine. Anything, I, if I have time, it ain't my time. I'm just steward of it. 
If I have strength, it's not my strength. I'm just a steward of it. If I have resources, it's not my resources. I'm just a steward of it. Do you understand what I'm talking about? If God owns all, everything right down to the air in my lungs, then he has delegated to me how I will use that, and he will call me into accountability. In this story, we have an owner who calls in a manager and says, I hear you have been neglecting what I have put under your oversight. He says, now I need to call you into account with what I've given to you. In today's terminology, that would be God has given you time. What are you doing with your time? <laughs> what are you doing with your time? Everybody is brought down to equality in time. We have 24 hours in a day. Nobody has been given more hours in a day than you. Everybody's got the same, but it's very different how people use it. Are you being entertained or are you developing yourself? I sit on planes and reads while I see others watch movie. I sit on planes and listen to leadership material and develop myself while I see others listen to music. Y'all don't want to hear what I'm saying? Ain't nobody clapping nowhere in the building. <laughs> I'm about personal development. While other people cut on radios, I put in a CD of somebody teaching. I have no downtime. If I'm working out and I got earplugs in, I'm not listening to the latest tunes. I'm listening to a great man of God tell me something I didn't know. Why? So that when I leave, I've not only worked out with my body, but I've renewed my mind and I'm strengthened my spirit. And when I go home, I can be a good husband and I can be a good daddy and I can be a good granddaddy and I can be a good manager and I can be a good provider. Come on, somebody. I mean, that's what I'm trying to do. I have talents. What am I doing with them? I have time. I have energy. What are you doing with your energy? What are you doing with your skills? What are you doing? Because if God has delegated that to you, he will hold you accountable as to how you have used it. <laughs> Roll with me here now. <clears throat> so, this manager had been neglecting it, and he said, I got to get myself together and start paying attention to what God has given me to steward, or else he's going to move on from me to somebody else. I'm going to tell you something. When I came and started this church in Greenville, I had a, prof a prophet come to me and said, you were number three. I said, what do you mean? He said, the first two people told God no. So you're going to get the blessing. Look what they missed. The greatest church in America. <laughs> Thank God he waited till number three. Hallelujah. Thank God he went on down the line. <laughs> I can handle being third string. I'm all right with that. Okay. Throw Proverbs 24 3 on the screen if you would. Proverbs 24 3. I'm going to show you something right here, okay? Through wisdom, a house is built. Are y'all bored? No. By understanding, okay, it is established. By knowledge, it's filled. Okay? He said the children of the world are wiser. There are three things that build a house. Number one, there's knowledge. You cannot rise above what you know. Wherever you stop learning, your life quit going. You cannot rise above the level of revelation you have. Whatever you know, you continue to rise. Where you stop and cap off your knowledge, your life stops. Your life <coughs> grows as long as your knowledge grows. How do I come up here every Sunday for 26 years? Because all week I'm studying. 
I'm putting something in me. If I preached the same message over and over and over again, it would get boring. It would get familiar. Nobody would want to hear it. But I have to keep challenging myself to rise so that I can take people with me and cause them to rise because I cannot rise above what I know. Now, he said we have to have understanding. Okay? Knowledge is information. Roll with me here. This is so powerful. Knowledge is information. Understanding is comprehension. You know how Jesus said they hear, but they don't hear? They're they're listening to me, but they don't hear me. And he says, he who has an ear, let him hear. Well, all of them are hearing. What is he talking about? Comprehend. He says they listen to me, but they don't have no idea what I'm saying. So he said we need knowledge and we need comprehension. The church has a book of knowledge and they have a Holy Spirit that gives them understanding. But God said the world has wisdom. Wisdom is application. He said, while we're shouting, they're profiting. (laughs) While we're trying to inherit heaven, they're inheriting the earth. He said, because they are more shrewd than the sons of light. And then he teaches a parable on accountability. Now, if they know how to apply understanding and knowledge, and they know how, by wisdom a house is built. You don't build anything because you have knowledge. You don't build anything because you have comprehension. You only build something when you start applying what you understand and what you know. So the people who build great things, people who build great lives, people who build great marriages, people who build great businesses, people who build anything great, they have learned how to take what they know and go apply it. Too many times in church, we have regained a whole lot of knowledge, but it doesn't even follow us out the door. It's not until you go out and do what you've heard that your house becomes strong. Ah, oh, the wise man is like a man who built his house upon the rock. That when the storm came, it was still there. But the foolish man is the man who heard the word and went out and did nothing. The difference between a wise man and a fool is not what they know, it's what they went out and did with what they know. Somebody who knows what I'm talking about, shout hallelujah. Are you willing in this next season to take what you know and take what you understand and go out and put some work to it? Because faith without works is dead. And I want to see a group of people raised up in this next year that aren't just clapping about a life. They aren't just worshiping about a life, but they walk out in the wisdom of God and build a life. Somebody shout yes. Oh, take 10 seconds and bless the name of the Lord your God. I feel something moving. I feel something shaking. I feel God calling an army to action. Get up, get up, get up, get up. Oh. you can bless yourself or you can curse yourself. It's your choice. How you gonna respond to a problem? Judas went and committed suicide. Peter repented. What are you gonna do? The Encounter. Eight dynamic messages from Ron Carpenter designed to help you encounter greatness. The anointing of the Holy Ghost breaking curses. Your daddy's words are falling out of your head right now. God has got seeds of greatness in people and I'm ready for him to reign. 
but you've got to serve God and do what your hands have been given to do with all your might. I'm preaching this with such passion because some of you, this is your ticket to the next level. This eight message series is available for your gift of $40 or more. Call in the next 10 minutes and we'll include free shipping and an MP3 download card. Call now or visit roncarpenter.com or write to the address on your screen. Can't tell you how grateful I am that you allow us to share this time with you. I don't take it for granted. It's a very special privilege that we have to take the Word of God and break bread with you. And so we take serious our responsibility here at Ron Carpenter Ministries to bring you the very best that we can and do it in an excellent way and represent Jesus in an excellent way. You know what? I want to invite you to connect with me on a deeper level. And uh, for those of you who may not be doing the social media thing, I understand, but I would invite you to the good side of social media, and that's people like myself and many others. We're always trying to give words of encouragement, always trying to give nuggets and clips from our different messages, and then things that maybe through TV you would not be privy to, such as different meetings we have and leadership sessions that we have. And I'd like to invite you to it. Maybe it could be a source of encouragement and let you know us on an even deeper level. So go on Facebook, go on Instagram, go on Twitter, and check us out. I would love to get to know you on a deeper level. I also want to speak to those of you who have been our covenant partners. We're in another year. God's doing so many good things. And uh, we're so excited about the emails that we get and the praise reports and the amount of people that we're being able to touch. I never dreamed at one time in my life when I was just trying to get enough people in a church to keep the lights on uh, that God would give me a chance to pick up a microphone in one building and speak to the world. How did that happen? It happened because God put it in my heart and it happened because you believed in us. And we're grateful for that. I would ask you to continue your support. Those of you who've been blessed by it and maybe you've never given to a ministry or maybe never given to this one, I would love to invite you into this family, this support network, this wonderful group of people that we are connected together through this vision, through this word, through our prayers, and through financial support. So if you've never given before for whatever reason and you're thinking about it, praying about it right now, for your first month's gift of any amount, whether you become a consistent partner or you say, hi, I just feel like I need to do something this one time, we have this very special offer we want to give you and send to you as a gift to say thank you. And for those of you who've been supporting, I ask you to continue because we're certainly not out of vision. We got so much more to say and so many people to say it too. And I invite you to continue helping us do that. We're in great days right now and God will always excel what he's done. We praise him according to his excellent greatness because God is the God who can always outdo tomorrow what he did yesterday. I speak blessings on you and your household. Until next time, we'll see you soon. Join us every week for another exciting message from Ron Carpenter. And until then, visit us online at roncarpenter.com and discover encouraging resources to help you reach your greatest potential in your Christian walk. And when you visit, consider partnering with our ministry team to help us take this life-changing message to the world. Our goal is to take the message and ministry of Ron Carpenter to a worldwide audience, but we can only do it with your help. And don't forget to connect with Ron every day through social media. Thank you so much for being a part of this ministry, and we'll see you again next time for another challenging message with Ron Carpenter.